I love a good thick book. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a spoiler filled vlog for Empire of the Vampire. If you haven't read this, I suggest you go watch my spoiler free book review. But just as a warning, this is 100% filled with spoilers. So do check out that video if you're not interested in spoilers. But if you are, then you've come to the right place and I hope you enjoy because this is a very long vlog for a very long book. Enjoy. Hi, hello. I am reading Empire of the Vampire and I really like it. I'm wearing my Empire of the Vampire shirt on the back. I'm reading it on my Kindle Fire, which I hate, but whatever. So Gabriel is giving the monster dude, I forget his name, his life story. It's really funny too. It's cracking me up. So he just got to the part where his horse falls into the rabbit hole and it's really sad because he has to put his horse down. But also, his sword talks to him. Like, that's fucking weird. I mean, it's really cool, but it's definitely giving me <laughs> Mr. Kindly vibes. Like, if you've read Nevernight, Mr. Kindly is Mia's shadow friend. I think it's cool that the sword talks to him. It just gave him, like, a warning. It was like, oh, Gabriel, they're coming or whatever. So now Gabriel's, like, on foot since he doesn't have a horse anymore. Anyway, I'm gonna keep reading. I really like it so far though. Okay, so Gabriel is obviously a douchebag. So he's at the Perfect Husband Tavern, I guess for the night. And one of the ladies that works there is asking him if he wants anything to drink and they didn't have whiskey. So whenever he asks for whiskey, she says, does this look like a Leard's Keep to you? And he responds with, it looks far from a Leard's Keep indeed, and you far from a lady. So keep the lip on your face, mademoiselle, and just tell me what you have. <laughs> He's really funny. <laughs> also, when Gabriel is explaining his first sexual encounter, dude. <laughs> Also, so like out of the four houses, so there's Blood Voss, Blood Chastain, Blood Ion, I think it's an island, and Blood Devok. I think it would be in Chastain. Either that or Blood Voss. So I think I'm around page 130 because every now and then the, those numbers will pop up, but it's hard to tell. I also don't like reading on an e-reader because... I can't like go back and flip through the pages. Anyway, so he's at the tavern talking to Chloe and they mentioned Astrid and I'm wondering like what happened to her. Also, so I just got to the end of this chapter and Chloe mentioned that she found the grail and then Gabriel's so drunk that he fell out of his chair. I'm gonna keep reading now. Good morning. So it is the next day. I've just made an iced coffee. And last night I stopped reading at the part where Gabriel tore out the fledgling's heart. Dude, the whole scene was just so freaking epic. I don't really know what my plans are today. I'll probably do some chores and then read a little bit more. I will keep you guys posted. So I went back to the quote when he was ripping her heart out. And it says, her plea became a scream as my fist closed about her heart and tore it from its moorings. The ore had begun rotting as soon as it was free, stolen years rushing back with a vengeance. But I held it in my fist, squeezing a rush of luscious dark blood into my file before it all turned to ashes. It's just such a good scene. So I'm on the next chapter and he's talking to, I think the woman that works in the tavern. He tells them that their blood is worth smoking. He's like, Mercy, I nodded, striding past. I say again, your blood's worth smoking. I'm gonna start saying that to people, like, as a compliment. I'll be like, your blood is worth smoking. <laughs> I've just gotten to the part where we found out that Danton is basically after this group because 
the boy uh, Dior knows where the grail is and I think they're going to go after it. It's in San Mycon, that's how you say it, like a monastery or something. Chloe asked him to go and then he refused, said it was like fool's errand and then as soon as she was like, no, no, I can't ask this of you, you have a wife and a child, then he was like, oh, well, I, I'll go like part of the way. They agreed to go, nothing good can come of this. I just got to a part that was really funny. Gabriel is at this mansion with Greyhand and DeCoste. Greyhand says, initiate DeCoste. When the master of the house arrives, I want you ready to use the gifts of your blood. If tempers flare, keep them dampened. If good cheer is required, provide it. And then Greyhand says to Gabriel, he says, initiate De Leon. Don't touch anything. The banter in this is 10 out of 10. And like the vibes of this like whole book so far, like there's a lot of world building and there's a lot of imagery, but it's so it's like building on top of everything and it's just getting so freaking good. The descriptions are just amazing, but the banter is fucking hilarious. Anyway, so it's uh, 7.25 now, so I don't know how much more, I mean, I'll probably read more, probably like... I don't know. I'm taking it really slow. I, mean, I think I'm in like in it 200 or so pages right now. Anyway, I'm loving it a lot. I'm still so excited to be reading this. So I just got to the part where they are checking out the wife, the alderman, alderman, the alderman's wife. And I'm getting major Bram Stoker Dracula vibes because she's like sick or whatever. And they're trying to figure out what's wrong with her. And then they find bite marks. I don't know, I'm just like, um, Dracula. So it has been a week since I last vlogged. I put it down because it's not being released for like another two weeks in the US and I didn't want to finish the arc. It's only because it is only the first like 300 pages or something. But I'm going to read some more today. Today is Saturday and the 4th and it gets released on the 14th. So I have 10 more days <laughs> until I don't even know if I'll get the book on the 14th, but um, I'm going to vlog a little bit more today. I don't know if you can hear my husband in the garage, but he is woodworking right now. <laughs> He hates it so much when I film him. So yeah, just going to relax today and read some more Empire of the Vampire and I will let you guys know how it goes. I mean, I was really enjoying it, but I read a few other books this week. So I'm excited to get back to it. Um, I've missed Gabriel and I'm like, what is he up to? <laughs> Does anyone ever do that? Like whenever you have multiple reads, you kind of end up thinking about the book that you're not reading and you're like, oh, I wonder what they're up to. I'm not the only one that does that, right? So I just kind of flipped through the last chapter that I ended up at and it was when Gabriel tried to save Greyhound. Is that his name? <laughs> or am I making that up? Greyhand, <laughs> not Greyhound. He tried to save Greyhand and uh, Greyhound got mad because he had told him to like, you know, stand his ground or whatever, and yeah, Gabriel was trying to be like a hero. Uh, anyway, so I'm so excited to read some more of this book. Just to show you what my current read situation looks like. Yeah, it's chaotic. I have Legendborn, which I'm like, I only have this much left, but I have to be like in the mood for it. So, oh, look at this pretty bookmark. Isn't that so pretty? That's from Florally Marked. Go check it out. I am also reading The Sweetest Oblivion. 
And this is so good, y'all. This is my first Mafia romance. Um, and then I'm rereading Corrupt. This is, I've already read this. So yeah, those are my current reads. And I'm going to read Empire of the Vampire now. Okay, so I just finished reading the chapter titled A Beautiful View. That was, she was epic. So, Cloudy, Cloud de Blanc, de Blanc, de Blanc? I don't know, I'm butchering that, but that was insane. The wife kills the Otterman, her husband. It was so chaotic. So at one point it says, my master surveyed the carnage, the crushed priest, the moaning high blood, the murdered alderman and his screaming wife. I was drenched in sticky red stab wounds in my chest, ribs broken. And how he like boiled the blood and he asks Greyhand, he's like, what did I do? How did I do it? And Greyhand's like, I have no idea, but good job. <laughs> it's good. So this book just keeps getting better and better. I got to the part where it was basically like revealed that Gabriel, his bloodline is actually going to be like epic, which I guess that was like a given, but... I was just, I was so excited when it was talked about because, yeah, he accidentally, like, performed a sanguimency. I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, so he's going to be epic. But I just got to the part where he comes across Astrid in the restricted section, and I freaking love her. She is so funny. But I am so angry at myself because, well, I'm not angry at myself, but I'm angry at... Australian shipping because this print I knew like as I was reading the scene I was like oh my gosh I know what print now like I know who the print is as I was reading the scene it dawned on me the print that I saw that I wanted to buy is of this scene and I love the print so much but the shipping was going to be I think it was like 30 or 40 dollars for a print and I couldn't justify it Anyway, this is what it looks like. It's basically Astrid smoking some hardcore drugs. <laughs> okay, so Astrid is a queen. He saw like the seal on some container or something. And then he was like, oh my god, that's the crest of Alexandra III. He's like, you're either a thief or some kind of princess and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, I'm no princess, I'm a fucking queen. So I ended up taking a little nap and then went to Dunkin' Donuts and got their pumpkin cream cold brew and some donuts. Anyway, so I got a package and it's very fitting because it has Empire of the Vampire merch. It's a candle. Okay, so let's open it. This is what it looks like. So this is vampire trash. That's what it looks like. Dark romance. And last but not least, Gabriel de Leon. This one smells like soy, cedar, thyme, clove, and vampire blood. That's what it looks like. Anyway, so just wanted to show you that. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more and I will update you. I'm on a, like a sugar high right now because I just had two donuts and a coffee, so. But, let's go. So I just got to the quote that I had been looking out for. Um, 
it says a life without books is a life not lived which that's the quote that I was looking for because I have a shirt that says that but I really liked what was said before that it says I never thought I'd find such peace and simple reading the words were a kind of magic taking me by the hand and sweeping me into lands unseen times unremembered thoughts unimagined that's a good quote okay I'm gonna keep reading Okay, there's just too many freaking good quotes. I don't even know what page it is because it doesn't give me page numbers. So, in one of the chapters, when they're in the library, it says, Astrid was just as fierce a scholar as I was a swordsman, a girl who wielded books like blades. Oh. And then, like, the next page, Chloe is speaking and she says, What a world this would be were it not held up wholly and solely in the grip of stubborn old men. Yes, girl. Hello guys, so it is the next day. Today is Sunday and um, tomorrow is Labor Day. So I have work off tomorrow, thank God. So I don't have the Sunday scaries today. I'm really tired right now, but I really wanna read. I'll keep you guys posted on what I read. I don't even remember where I stopped last night. I think I stopped at the part where Gabriel found out that the sister of the Priory got killed by Vivian, the one that was crying in the cathedral, which that was really sad. But I wonder why she was crying. Anyway, so she ends up dead. Her name was A Wife? Wife? I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Anyway, so loving this book. I'll keep you guys posted. One hand holding a sword is worth 10,000 clasped in prayer. This book, you guys, is so freaking good. The amount I am highlighting is so excessive. I'm like highlighting pages. 10 out of 10. This is quickly becoming my favorite book I have ever read in my entire life, I swear to God. It's so good. Okay, I just read the most epic scene ever. <laughs> so Dior basically healed Rafa and Bellamy. That was intense. That was a plot twist. Because <laughs> I really expected one of them to die. He just like straight up healed them. That was, that, that was really cool. Respect that. Guess what day it is. got to the part where they told Gabriel that Dior is the Holy Grail. They are now fleeing from their camp or their post where they were sleeping because the Danton or whatever and his like army of the dead <laughs> basically are after them. I love how Gabriel, they're literally being chased, right, by these like by the army of the freaking dead. And Gabriel's like, oh, let me let me get a puff of my, my pipe. <laughs> He's probably doing that because it makes him like stronger, but I just thought it was funny. Guess what? I was eating lunch and she arrived. I'm very, very excited. Okay. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it's here in the flesh. Look how thick. Oh. <laughs> I am thrilled. Let's give it the sniff test. Oh. Oh gosh. I'm so happy. So my ebook says I'm on page 401. Let's see if that's true. Oh. I only have this much left to go? This is what I've read and this is what I have left to go. That makes me kind of sad. I'm more than halfway done with the book. I'm very sad, but I'm happy to have the book. Oh my God. Sorry.
Darcy, Phoebe, Rafa, and then Chloe. Oh my god. Here's the scene that I'm at right now. Oh hell yeah. Dior is a girl. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've just started book five. The Road to Hell. And now we're back to following the seven pillars and the Scarlet Foundry and the walls of the gauntlet, basically with Greyhand and Seraph Talon. So yeah, it's uh, we're switching, not switching stories, but like we are switching storylines now. Also, I really like this, uh, I really like that page art. It just got to the part where Gabriel was confronting Aaron. Uh, Aaron was drunk or whatever and Gabriel was like super pissed off at him and then he confronts him for seeing him whenever uh, Aaron was sneaking out of the armory the night that Aoif, I think that's how you say her name, was murdered and then the next chapter happens and then this lady shows up. From what I've read on this page here, she's definitely a vampire, maybe some kind of like ancient. The first line on page 430 says, and her name was Death. So I'm very much enjoying this book. I'm on page 430. There are a total of 700, 720 pages. Hello, so it is the next day. Basically what I read last night was when Greyhand got shredded, like his arm got tore off, his eye got jacked up. It was um, pretty catastrophic. And then they find out that the vampire they've been hunting has been Lore Voss. Well, that they've been hunting, which is now hunting them. <laughs> so Lore Voss is the daughter of the Forever King. So her story is that, I'm just gonna read it straight from the book because I can do that better than translating. So it says, when the walls of Villene had fallen to her father's endless legion, Lore had gathered every infant in the city, snatching them from cribs, wailing mother's arms, like some horror from a tall fireside tale. She opened them up like saints day gifts and poured their blood into the fountain in Villene's square, and then she fucking bathed in it. There was a passage that I highlighted extensively just because I thought it was so romantic. It was when Gabe was talking about Astrid's smile. were basically found out and there was like an angry mob these people are frustrating also uh talon is fucking canceled can we kill him please i just got to the part where gabe accidentally like bleeds on the parchment and it reveals this poem it says in justice and hope no hope there be in mercy and bliss no bliss for thee and death and truth no truth i see through blood and fire, now dance with me. And then Astrid and Chloe show up and they're like deciphering this poem. And then they kind of figure out the plans of the Forever King. I loved this chapter. It was pretty short. It's only like one, two, three, four, like six pages or something. But I loved them like kind of sitting around trying to decipher everything and like piecing things together. Like I really like that. Okay, so now they're like on this um, trail or whatever and everyone's freezing their ass off. Gabriel is pretty much leading them and he sees thousands of vampires. I'm just getting Game of Thrones flashbacks. I highlighted this whole ass quote because it's just so epic. I'm gonna continue reading. I think uh, shit's about to go down. I'm on page 503. Okay, so after he's done giving them like this, you know, speech as a leader, shit went down and freaking lore shows up. I wanted to show you the, the picture that goes with it. Of course, he's talking about Astrid. 
This is so intense. Gabriel kills Lore. And now the Forever King is pissed. Next chapter. He just found his whole family burned to char. This is sad. Also, uh, there's a really good quote on page 518. The end of the chapter. Yeah. That's some good stuff. I haven't highlighted it yet, but I'm about to. Okay, so now Gabe has been sworn in. He pledged to this, like, cult, whatever the hell it is. <sighs> Talon is dead. Basically, Gabe figured out that Talon was the one that killed Aoif, the Priory sister. When she was crying that night, he saw her in the um, chapel crying. And she was also pregnant with Talon's baby. And Talon fed on her and then killed her. And then Greyhand shows up and he murders him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kristoff. <laughs> but um, I highlighted on page 531, I highlighted, if we spend all our lives in darkness, is it any wonder when darkness starts to live in us? Grahan replies with, um, it's like some stuff, and then he says, life is not a story you can tell to Leon. It's only a story you can live. The bright news is you get to choose what kind yours will be. A story of horror or a story of courage, a story of indulgence, a story of duty, the story of a monster, or the story of a man. And then he says, what will your story be? Chapter 19, I think this is like book four or five or something, I don't even know. He, he sucked her blood from her nipple. That just happened. Okay, here's the art that goes with it. Okay, so now I'm, I'm at book six. John Francois is asking Gabriel to talk about the end, the beginning, and the grail. So I think we're going to go back to um, Dior. This is the next page. <laughs> it says author unknown. That's funny. From holy cup comes holy light, the faithful hand sets the world aright. And in the seven martyr sight, mere man shall end this endless night. I want that quote on a shirt or like uh, an art print or something. Chapter one of book. Six. Fear no darkness. Page 547. So far today I've read this much and I still have this much left to go. Okay, so I've read quite a bit more and I'll just talk about some highlights. On page 560, when Gabe and Dior are like having their um, like traveling or whatever, it, there's something about when characters are like traveling in winter and sleeping outside and I don't know, just the whole experience of traveling on foot or on horse or whatever. I just love those settings. I just adore those kinds of scenes. Here's the art that goes with it. It's just perfect. Perfect in every way. I just really don't like that whole scene. Um, actually, I read it twice just because I was like, I don't know, I love it so much. The second thing I'm obsessed with is the entire night market scene. Oh my god. Dude, the night market scene is just, it's, it's amazing. So the chapter is called The Price and it's just, it's so good. I also read these two pages, well it's like three pages, it's like page 571 to 573. I, I read them twice. It's so good. The night market scene kind of just gave me like Diagon Alley vibes. It was 10 out of 10. So yeah, those two scenes are probably up there in like two of my favorites in the whole book. But so I just got to the part where the freaking Inquisitors came for Dior because she helped heal that dude. Gabriel had told her not to do it because he was like, they're gonna call you a witch and burn you. And then that's exactly like what they did, they came in and they called her a witch. I mean, they haven't burned anything yet, but I hope that they don't like hurt Dior because I really like Dior. Next chapter is called Church Business. 
This book is already five out of five stars. So good. These freaking quotes, dude. It's just so amazing. The writing, I just, I'm obsessed, okay? Aim your heart at the fucking world. He got her clothes. So the page, like him and Gabe and Dior are talking and stuff. And look, that's the art that goes with it. But, they're friends. I love it. I love Dior. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick recap of what I've read. I got to the part where Gabe laid Dior and himself in Fortuna after the horse died to like stay warm and it was like so gross. And I was like, super excited when they ended up in Aveline because they found Batiste and Aaron and I, don't know, I was just like very happy because I was just happy to see like Batiste and Aaron happy and alive. I also loved Gabe's and Aaron's philosophical religious conversation because they're like so opposites in their beliefs. I just found their whole conversation very entertaining. But then Danton shows up and this is the art that goes with it. You can see in the background all of the living dead people but yeah danton shows up or whatever and he's an asshole of course and then he pretty much like throws rafa at gabe rafa being dead now except for he's like a fledgling i think that's what he's called he's like this brainless vampire and then gabe kills him well not kills him but like he ends him basically because he's already dead and then the part that i just read like so sad right now because it's something that I had thought about like so Dior and Gabe were talking or whatever and she basically tells him like why are you trying why are you trying to um sorry I have headphones in because I've been listening to classical music but anyway she's like why are you trying to kill the forever king or whatever like you know what is what is your motive what are you trying to do but she kind of like knows um she basically says like you know you talk about your wife and your daughter in the past tense and you talk in your sleep and i knew that gabe was seeing astrid or whatever uh but i just part of me wanted to to think they were alive obviously in the beginning of the book he so he's telling jean francois like the story and we know like everyone he loves is pretty much dead so like i knew that his wife and daughter were probably dead but i'm not explaining this correctly but i thought that they were alive at the time like he was doing this for them and he kept saying to everybody basically like i'm you know i can't wait to go home to my wife and my daughter and i don't know i think it was a cognitive dissonance thing for me i just didn't want to think that they were already dead. So the chapter that I'm, I have to read next is called The Worst Day. I haven't looked at it yet, but it's probably going to be Gabe explaining to Dior whatever happened to his wife, Astrid, and his daughter, Patience. I'm scared because I like almost started crying whenever Dior was like, that's where you buried them. Here? Because he tells them that they're at home and it just made me so sad and I just... So I'm going to read The Worst Day now and it's probably going to be the worst chapter. <laughs> I'm scared. It's going to be sad.
Oh my god, I'm shitting my britches right now, you guys. We were waiting on being attacked by Danton, and obviously Dior didn't want anyone else to die for her, so she flees, and then Gabe goes to, to find her because he put his blood, vi like a vial of his blood in her pocket, so he was able to like find her that way, which is really fucking cool. But now Danton and Lyeth, or whatever the hell her name is, have shown up, and they're like fighting over Dior, and I'm stressing out. Here's the art. So I'm in the middle of this chapter right now, and I'm gonna finish it. Okay, bye. Oh my god. That was so fucking epic. Dior killed him. She put her blood on the sword and stabbed him and then slit his throat. Oh my god. Okay, so then we got Lyathy, or whatever the hell her name is, trying to get Dior to come with her, and then Dior's like, no, fuck off. And then Lyathy just like turns into a bunch of red moths and disappears. Okay, okay. I don't even know how many pages I have left. I'm at like 687. Oh my god. Oh my god. Not, not enough. What the hell? Okay. Oh my god! Freaking Greyhand shows up and then Chloe shows up! Oh my god, and Chloe's alive! What? Oh, I'm so happy! Okay, I know it's getting dark. Um, I need to fucking turn on light, but... I just gotta say, I don't like Greyhound. Like, he's such a... He's such a freaking jerk. Telling Gabe that he's like a huge disappointment and shit. Get over yourself. Oh, hell no. After everything, they want to freaking sacrifice her? Get the fuck yeah. out. No. Oh my god, I hate all these fucking people. Death to all of them. Oh. Gabe goes after Dior to try and like freaking save her and then everyone's trying to stop him. Greyhound and then Finch. Fucking Finch, dude. Can we kill these guys? Death to all of them. Oh. Can they freaking stop? And the only reason he doesn't freaking kill Gabe right now. He bears the ages. Like really? You're so freaking religious. You would murder somebody. But oh wait, they bear the aegis of your god or whatever. So you're not gonna murder them? Like, come on. Ugh. Okay, finally turned my light on. So I take back what I said. They are trying to murder him. They put him on the goddamn heaven's bridge. These mother... Okay, I'm gonna read this now. I have like, my battery's about to die. Oh my God, I have like 18 pages left. Okay, so I'm currently downstairs. I just had a sandwich. And I have you guys sitting on this like table thing cause I didn't feel like bringing my tripod down here. Anyway, um, so I finished. I have some things to talk about. So, his sister, Celine. I need to soak that in. So he killed Greyhound, which was great. Greyhand. I keep saying Greyhound. Greyhand. And then Chloe. So, um, yeah, my feelings towards Greyhand and Chloe quickly changed because they wanted to murder Dior. Then he saves Dior. Love that he saved her. The ending where he kills Jean, or well, he attempts to kill Jean Francois. <laughs> I, I cannot wait until the next one. It doesn't really end on a cliffhanger, but it's definitely like a to be continued kind of thing. This was amazing. Here's what my book ended up looking like. I'm really sad to be finished, and I don't know what to do with my life now. I want to reread it already. I'm sad. So that concludes this reading vlog. If you made it this far, leave any emoji that you want to leave because I can't even think right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm just sad to have finished it. This is going to be a really long vlog. So <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it and until tomorrow.